Have you ever deployed a risky feature and wish there was just a toggle you can press that hides that feature? Or have you ever wanted to deploy a feature to a certain amount of users only so you can gather feedback and see how well it works? Well, that's where feature flags come in. But there's a lot more to it than just a switch that hides a feature. So settle down, take a drink, and let's dive deep into feature flags and talk about what feature flags are, the different types of feature flags and deployment strategies, and some of the off-the-shelf tools for feature flags. Now let's start with a simple practical example. Let's imagine we have an e-commerce website and we've developed a state-of-the-art AI wishlist feature. Now for the AI part, we decided to use OpenAI and ChatGPT, but as we've learned in the past, there might be time where ChatGPT is down because there's too many requests. Now, if this happens, we want the feature to be easily hidden or turned off when this happens. Now, this is where we can implement a simple on-off feature flag that we can use to hide the feature on production without actually changing any of the code. And this is how a simple implementation like that could look. Now, I'm using a launch darkly tool here, which I'm going to get into a little bit later but we're initiating a client checking if the feature is enabled basically means sending the feature key and the user to the launch directly client and then before executing our feature or enabling our feature we check if the feature is enabled i'm just outputting the if the feature is enabled or not but this is a simple way to check if the feature is enabled and the actual logic if the feature is enabled will be in this client which basically would depend on some kind of config. There's a lot of different feature flags out there. This is just the simplest on off toggle. And there's, depending on the de your deployment strategy and how your application works, there's different ways to implement this, but I'll get into that a little bit later. I'll just understand how this works. Before feature flags, if you wanted to deploy anything on your production application, you'd need to create a new release and deploy that. And basically the release and the deployment were tied together. You couldn't deploy something without the release or you couldn't release something without deploying it now maybe that doesn't really make sense but with feature flags how this works is you have the code on production so you've already deployed your code on production but the feature itself can be included or not included in the release so if i configure this feature flag to be off on my production i deployed the code already but the feature is off, then the code will be there and the user won't see the feature. So this is how we can separate the release from the feature. Now, before I actually go into the different types of feature flags, I want to talk about the, some of the tools out there that you can use to implement feature flags. Now, of course, we can go on a manual route and keep track of the feature ourselves, get the config ready, add all the logic to check if the feature is enabled or not. But this can get very complicated as we go through the different types of feature flags. And you'll see why in a second. But because it's such a popular way to deploy and release features, there's a lot of tools out there we can use. For example, there's the AWS app config that AWS provides. If mainly if your architecture is already on AWS, this is a great way to implement feature flags. Or there's the GitLab CI C D feature flag system, or there's launch darkly, which is just a third party feature flag and this is what I'm going to use in all the examples and I'm sure there's a lot more out there and each of these basically work under the same principles we create feature flags in the configuration for them on the tool and then we use some kind of SDK to check if the feature is enabled when we actually need to execute the code an example I showed before I used launch darkly and we can see where we initialize the SDK client and when we check if the feature is enabled or not. Even though these work on the same principles, they are still unique and they will still differ in the things that they offer. I won't really go too deep into these tools. I really wanna just talk about feature flags in this video. And like anything, there's gonna be downsides to using these tools. For example, if you're using SDKs, we're probably gonna make API calls to the third party tool to check if the feature is enabled. And this means potentially a lot of API calls for a lot of visitors to check if the feature is enabled. Now there's other ways to go around this, but if you were to manually implement feature flags, this can just be a JSON with all the features in if they're enabled or not. But again, there's flexibility and constraints depending on how you use and which tool you use. And also it all depends on your requirements. If you need a very complex tool, you can use any of these. If you just need something simple on and off switch, maybe a JSON file might be the way to go. 
you can host this somewhere else, but you need to make sure that it's secure and people can just change feature flags. In general, there's gonna be a few things to consider before you use feature flags and which tool you're gonna go for. What I would recommend thinking about is where do you want the load to be of the logic? For example, if, if you need to make an API request every time a user visits your website, would you be okay adding that wait time for the user? How much control would you want from the feature? Maybe you want full control, maybe you just want something that you can say deploy this to 10% every 10 minutes, or like preset deployment schedules and stuff like that. And who would be managing the feature flags? Would it be the developers or would it be someone from the product team? But basically, if it's developers, probably they're going to just use a JSON file where they can just commit changes. But if it's people that are not developers and the pro people from the product, then the requirements are different. You can use different tools. Okay, moving on with our example. Now let's imagine that we found a stable solution for our AI wishlist and we know that it's going to work 99% of the time. But it only works for users that are based in a certain place in the world. For example, let's say this AI feature only works for people based in the UK. And in this case, we could extend our simple on-off feature flag to only work for users that are based in the UK. And in the example I've used with e-commerce websites, we're gonna know where the user is based in based on their personal details. And of course, this can be based on the IP address or you can do an IP lookup. But in this case, I'm just gonna use the user country that they're registered with. And here's a simple example how we can pass that information. Now, I'm hard coding this to the UK, but when we check if the feature is enabled, we have the user key and the feature key, and we have the user country, and we can just say, if the country is not the UK, just return false. We don't even make API calls, we don't check anything, and this is gonna be hard coded in our code, but this can also be passed to the SDK and the configuration in LaunchDarkly or whatever tool you're using, and they do this check based on the user details you provide. Cool, so that's now a bit more complicated because now we have the regional component added to our feature flags. And that's one way you can deploy features based on their the user's location or the user's information. Now let's go a step further and let's say the AI that we're using works everywhere, works globally so we can use it for users based all over the world. But we want to slowly release this to a certain amount of users first, then increase the number of users that can see this feature slowly over time. And this is what Facebook and Instagram uses when they release big features. I'm sure you've seen articles about it, but this is called the Canary release. Now, depending on the tool you use for your feature flags, the implementation here will differ, but most of these tools already allow for progressive delivery or a Canary release. Now, the logic for how many users should be able to see this release will be in the SDK itself or in the tool itself. We can specify allow only 10% of the users to see this and all of the logic of counting how many users have seen it will be in the SDK or the tool we use. Now here is an example using AWS app config of setting up a deployment strategy with a Canary release. If you go to AWS app config and then deployment strategies, and this is me creating a deployment strategy we can add a name, whatever description and the deployment type, this can be either linear or exponential and both of these are great depending on what kind of deployment size you want we can set the percentage of people for each step so this means the deployment strategy means in AWS we can configure deployment over time and we can say deploy to 20 percent every 10 minutes so in this case it will deploy in the first minute it's going to deploy to 20 percent of the people after 10 minutes it's going to deploy to 40 percent of the people after 10 minutes 60 and you get the idea and then we can use this deployment strategy for our feature flag and there's a lot of different deployment strategies you can use out there for example a b split testing or blue green deployment strategies and i won't really go into every single one of these but I hope you get the idea of what the ideas are trying to achieve and how feature flags work. Basically, if you want to decouple the deployment and the release and you want a control way of having a deployment strategy for your features, then feature flags is a solution for you. And of course, they can range from a simple on-off switch to a complex deployment strategy. That's been it for this video. If you have any feedback, put down in the comments. If you want me to cover anything in the future, Again, put down in the comments. Make sure to subscribe, like the video, do all the things for the algorithm. Thank you very much for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day. Happy coding. Bye.